What's up mamas? It's Maggie, a team member here at BoJen, and welcome to Express Yourself, the YouTube channel where we share tips, tricks, and all things helpful on your mommying journey. Let's get real in this video and talk about something that's important and affecting a lot of moms negatively. That's mommy martyrdom. We're going to talk in this video about how mommy martyrdom is putting our health at risk, potentially jeopardizing our relationships with all of our family members, and some tips on what we can do about it. So what is a mommy martyr? If you're not familiar with this term, it's it's growing in popularity or, or usage, I guess, on the internet. And it's basically a mom who will do anything and everything she can for her family to the point that she's putting her own health and wellness at risk. And the glorification of this is like bragging about it. Like I can't even get a shower today because I've done X, Y, and Z, or, you know, my family, I do everything for my family and then there's nothing left for me. So it, it leads to the glorification of drinking because, you know, needing a drink because you're a mom and other negative potential, uh, potentially harmful habits. So literally like the term martyr, it's a woman that has sacrificed herself for her, the cause of her family. If this sounds terrifying, it actually is, right? So it's isolating, it's exhausting, it taxes our relationships with our partners and our children and with our other support systems. It can foster resentment and yet it's also tantalizing for some moms. It's it's this trap that we fall into. It's kind of like becoming a negative person before you were a mom where you could like spin out of control with complaining or negativity. This is kind of like how that all bleeds into motherhood in a sense. So why is it being glorified? Well, let's talk about social media for a second. You've got apps like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, where you're showing videos and photos of what is unrealistic, right? So setting these high expectations of what motherhood could or should be when behind the scenes or on a different day, that influencer does not have a house that looks like that or, you know, her kids aren't dressed like that or her, you know, their behavior is not reflected in these these posts. It's creating and perpetuating unrealistic standards. So it's setting the bar way too high for most of us as mothers, right? Then it also becomes... So because we're trying to do it all, right? We want to do it all. Then it's the strife of trying and becoming and wanting to do it all. It's just like this snowball effect that happens. So it's time for a reality check on mommy martyrdom. And you're getting it here from Bojen. Your kids require a lot from you. Your family requires a lot from you, right? You have your children's needs. They need to be fed. They need to be clothed. They need to be clean. The house needs to be clean. Their clothes need washed. Go all of these. And then you've got your husband or your partner and they have uh, requirements on your time and energy. And it all affects your mental health and wellness. If you are giving everybody in your family all that you have all of the time and you're never taking any time to refill your cup or like, restore your energy or get a moment to just sit with yourself and your thoughts and kind of just rejuvenate your health and mind and body, you're going to burn out. And this burnout hits hard for moms. On the other side, we need to set healthy expectations for our children, right? We are a living embodiment of what family looks like, or what motherhood is, of what a healthy, happy, functioning adult is. And if we are burnt out or if we are striving to be this mommy martyr, we're not creating healthy expectations for our children. So not only is this detrimental to ourselves, but it is potentially detrimental to our children in the long run. And then there's the more immediate effects, right? If you are super exhausted, if you have no energy, if you are, you know, hanging by a thread, you're likely to snap at your children. You're likely to snap at your partner. You're likely to not be as engaged, even if you're sitting there playing with your children, right? And you think that because you're present and you're not on your phone, you're there for them. You're really not if you're super exhausted all of the time. So if you stick around here long enough <laughs> on any of our channels, right, our blog or our Instagram, our Facebook group, our Facebook community, our YouTube channel, you'll know that we talk about self-care as moms a good bit. And this is so important, right? So we need to set time aside. 
We need to create the expectation for our family members that mommy needs time to do whatever it is that gives you joy or restores your energy or is, you know, cathartic for your mental health and wellness. And by doing that, we can stop this pursuit of martyrdom and focus just a little bit of time on ourselves so that we can be better moms. Let's think about it this way. You wouldn't move your family into a house, use and abuse it, bang on the walls, beat it up, and then never take care of it. You wouldn't never clean it, right? You would wash things. You would repair things. You want it to be a safe and nurturing environment for your children. If you don't take time for self-care, that is exactly what you're doing to yourself, right? Self-care is that restoration, right? It's the, the cleaning. It's the restoring. It is everything that you need to be doing to be the best possible parent for your child. And it sounds selfish, right? Taking time away from your kids, especially if they're crying for you at that moment, it sounds and feels so just selfish, right? But it's not because by taking that hour or, you know, whatever chunk of time it is that you need, you are reinvesting in your ability to care for your children. So it is actually for them that you are taking this brief pause or time out and not being a mommy martyr. Okay, so you can imagine how mommy martyrdom is affecting our partners, right? No time for them. They feel ostracized. We've already talked at length about how it affects our children. You can't really be there for them. You're always exhausted, so you might be yelling at them more. Uh, you're not coming up with creative ways to play and engage and stimulate their development. What about friendships? Mommy martyrdom just effectively can kill friendships like no other. If we're constantly falling our perver on our proverbial sword and, you know, we're going to be talking about it all the time and this bleeds into our friendships. And if your friends aren't also mommy martyrs and, and just living and dwelling in that negative aspect of motherhood, then you're going to push them away. And you need friends, right? We need a community. If this pandemic and isolation has taught us one thing, one thing, it's that moms need the support system. Both, yes, you can get it virtually, and we have been, right? Moms rise to the occasion. We're incredible. But you also, it's really nice to have that in person as well. And if you're constantly kind of pushing your friends away or sacrificing time with your friends, because if you're doing everything for your family that you could possibly ever be doing, how do you have time for your friends? Especially those friends who might not have kids yet or who have kids that are a little bit older than yours. You're going to push these people away and you need that friendship. You need to be able to lean on these people, to talk to them, to ask them for help. Okay, so we've talked about negativity. We've talked about the impacts of it. Now, how, how do we use self-care to break the cycle of mommy martyrdom, right? Because it sounds simple. It sounds like, oh yeah, just self-care, right? Do some yoga, go read a book, go journal. No, 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 no. It's not that easy. But the good news is with a little bit of effort, we can do it. We can break the cycle and stop becoming martyrs for our families. So the first thing is to regain your agency by setting boundaries. If like we mentioned before, the thought of squeezing self-care into your daily routine, into your busy schedule, sparks the feeling of guilt. You're not alone and you're not wrong. There is a wonderful woman by the name of, and if I butcher this, I apologize, Dr. Pooja Lakshmin, and she writes for the New York Times in this article. And she has this advice that she gives to spend time with your weekly schedule and identify where you're able to set boundaries. Boundaries. We talk about this with people, you know, in, in other videos and other blog posts, but if you can take back control of your motherhood journey, set some boundaries, you'll be able to reform your definition of motherhood, right? Where it's a happy and healthy version of motherhood, not this negative perpetuation of always being drained. Part of setting boundaries, an important part of setting boundaries is delegation. Mommy martyrdom, we do it all, right? 
when we're not mommy martyrdom, we delegate and help bring our families in to uh, the list of chores or the list of to-dos that we have. So asking your partner to help you with the dishes or the laundry or whatever it might be. And you might have some pangs of guilt or it might be, you know, bring up some icky feelings, but it's going to help you. Teaching your kids to help with, you know, bring their plate to the kitchen sink or to put their clothes in the laundry basket at bath time or whatever it is. Those are things that you're you're getting help. You're not always constantly picking up after them, but you're also teaching them healthy habits that are going to set them up in life. So delegation, it is hard, but it is, you know, an important aspect of redefining what motherhood is. We mentioned self-care. So taking care of ourselves is vital. It takes away time from our family, makes us feel guilty, but this is another place that we can have a bit of delegation. We can lean on our partner or we can lean on our parents or we can lean on a friend and say, hey, can you take the kids for me for just 15 minutes, for an hour? I just, I need to do this. It's going to help me. I'll be, you know, even more present when I'm back. Communicate the value of the time that you're saying that you need away from your family when you're delegating the care duties to this other person. And they're going to see the effect of the before and after when you frame it correctly for them and they're going to be able to say yeah sure next time you need that just let me know i'm here for you right well hopefully but that's the general uh trend that we find we have some tips for self-care as well not just delegating but because time away from your kids time away from your partner and asking somebody else to be the sole caregiver and that is difficult. Start small. One of our amazing affiliates, Sandy J. Green, has some great tips on not just self-care but radical self-care and how you can start to implement it. So this tip comes from her that we need to, she, she tells us that we need to, to perform radical self-care her definition of radical self-care that we've been taught whether you know it's, it's being self-taught or by external pressures of social media that we shouldn't prioritize ourselves as mothers but we need to radical self-care means reprioritizing ourselves so that we can reinvest in our families we can't give you your own prescription for self-care you need to take a deep dive and figure out what brings you joy what kindles that spark within you there's no preset plan. For some people, it's going to look like journaling. For other people, it'll take the form of exercise. Whatever you need, that's what your self-care is. So for me, sometimes it's as simple as taking a break and sitting down with my knitting or a sewing project. That's what I need. And I had to communicate that to my family because they didn't see that it was self-care. They didn't understand because they're a little bit different than me. And that's okay. As long as we were able to talk through it, now they know, oh, she's got her knitting. Let's leave mommy alone for five minutes and they take the ch my, my son outside or whatever it might be. We promise you that your family is resilient and they're going to survive this time away from them. Your family will notice the difference. And you might even start to see your kids say things like, oh, mommy is running or, oh, mommy's going to go do this now. I'll let her go do that because I know she's better when, when she comes back from it. <laughs> now that we've talked through setting boundaries, self-care, the third thing we can start doing as a community is glorifying the right stuff. Glorifying mommy martyrdom is as harmful to our children as glorifying or un perpetuating unhealthy body image. While the narrative is gaining momentum, we're speaking another into existence. And that is happy, healthy moms who are speaking the truth, who are discovering and sharing how this encompassing version of motherhood is leaving them broken. And it's leaving them devoid of the ability to actually nurture and care for their children, which was the original goal anyway, right? In this new narrative, moms are seeking for help. They're finding their community, even if that community is digital right now. Together, we can and we are pushing back on this conception of motherhood, sharing our truth. And that means that we're sharing what it means to be a mom in this modern landscape, right? In, in this new digital age. 
it's weird and it's it's new territory because our parents didn't have this digital landscape in which we're living. They didn't see everything that somebody was doing by looking at their social media, right? So we're so showing society that this is a myth that is unhealthy, unrealistic, and almost unattainable, or at least unsustainable, and that we are consciously making decisions that will enable us to give the best versions of ourselves to our children. Take time for yourself, talk to your partner, talk to your support system, whether that's friends and family, whether it's grandparents, whoever that might be, talk to them about setting boundaries, about regaining some agency in your schedule and finding time for self-care. That is the recipe here. And then let's start perpetuating that. Let's start talking about that to our friends and family. Let's start posting that on social media. All right, friends, it's been a longer video and it's been a tough one or, or one that we're getting real and raw in. So I hope you have resonated or found this interesting and thank you for sticking around to the end. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to our channel. And also, if you really liked it, hit that notification bell so that you're ready to go anytime we publish new content like this one. Thanks so much, Mama. Stay pumped for Bojan. Thank you.